there we go. All right, so this is part two of gratitude. Uh, just And so we're going to jump into the new part here. I know we got a little bit of time left, got a little bit to cover. Um, so I was looking up, uh, you know, different things and a uh, synonym of gratitude uh, is thankfulness. Uh, that the definition of gratitude is to extend favor towards or giving grace and kindness as a response. Um, when I look at the definition of extending favor towards, it sounds like reciprocity, which is something that we kind of talked about a little earlier, that God extends favor towards me, therefore I respond. I respond in kind, not because there is an immediate benefit to me as an individual, but that there may be a benefit also to those genetically related to me, or going back to the formula of R times B is greater than C, or the relatedness uh, genetically times the benefit is greater than the cost of the individual. The benefit to those I encounter is greater than the cost to the individual. I want to bring out a scripture here, 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. We'll be reading here from the King James Version. There we go. If I can have a volunteer to read. 2 uh, Corinthians 2, verse 14. And on the screen on the I left, we have NLT. On the right, we have the KJV version. I read um, King James. Okay, 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make us manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Mm, that is good. Uh. That is good. So as we dig deeper here, let me, there we go. So something that caught my attention here, we'll go back to the text here for a minute. It says, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. So triumph comes in Christ. You can't truly triumph outside of Christ. and makes manifest the savior of his knowledge by us in every place. To break it down in an um, elementary type level, basically, you know, I see out of this that that the cause of our triumph or the cause, right, is Christ. And the effect is triumph. That because of Christ, we win. I think about, you know, because it's not about the short term. We're talking about eternity, right? And so I think about, say, a season. Say, we could talk about basketball, you know, March Madness just concluded at the college, you know, level at the women, uh, in the women's tournament, uh, South Carolina won. That doesn't mean that they won every game this season. They lost games. I'm sure during the season, they had times where they were down, you know, where they were unsure of what the end of the year might look like that they had issues that they had to work through, but they triumphed, right? And it's the same way here in this walk that uh, our triumph isn't, isn't determined by how well we perform. That there's not, there's multiple reasons why, uh, why, we may lose. And the reason of the loss is not always uh, one factor, right? It's not always one thing. In the case of sports, right, it's not always that we're not the best team. Sometimes it's, it's that you don't have the best coaching, that you have the tools, but the coach doesn't know how to orchestrate, you know, uh, each game in a way that you win. Uh, the best team doesn't always win. But we can be confident in knowing that because of Christ, we always win. That we're always on the winning side, regardless of the seasons that we might go through. Because in the end, we win. 
So we don't always triumph because of how good we are uh, or because we're so talented and because we have such amazing gifts uh, or that, man, uh, we are so deep every time we pray or that, man, supernaturally, this revelation that I have, these things aren't why we triumph. We triumph solely because of Christ alone. This alone is a reason to be thankful. That I don't have the best resume, that that I don't have the best track record, but because of Christ, I win. I'll pause there if anyone has any comments they would like to add. Um, Minister, I, I think I wrote it in um in the chat box, but um, the, like you were saying, um, uh, uh, when we was going the last part of the review, that's why you said the uh, when we we are all in it, this race, we are all in this Christian race, and I thank God, like you said, but the, the um the scripture said the race is not given to the swiftest, not to the strongest, like so, so so we don't have to try to go so fast and keep up with the person beside us. Uh, I do it, it doing it if something is good as the other person because God sees our heart and he knows. But look, in the end, if we get to the end, like I say, we all going to get the prize. And what the prize is? A crown of life. And that's what we, look, the, the, um, um, that, that's, that's what we are um, striving for, like the tortoise and the hare. You know, he, or he thought he'd he been running, running. Or, look, and then like I said, because that's what happens sometimes. To people, like you said, they get the big head, that, like this said. Or, oh, uh, um, so the, the hare thought, oh, I'm going so fast. And that taught us he's so slow. And then we start backing up and slowing down from the things, you know, um, because when you get up on the big seat, then you think, you know, the little things you don't have to do no more. And and that's where the enemy comes in. You know, like you said, uh, like how Adam and Eve, they were in the garden. They were doing so good. But then that enemy had to come in and, and start um, 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 talking to Eve's mind. Um, look, um, Look, you, you you can eat that. No, and he just said, no. He told us that. Oh yeah, you can do it. It, it, it ain't gonna matter. Look, 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 and that's what the enemy does to try to get us to the 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 get out. No, like so, we're not gonna get out of the race, but they mm -hmm. want us to to get out of the race and just sit down. Well, I done messed up, and the, like you said, and I. Uh, so it don't need for me to try no more. We like to say, but no, we have to get up and, and and we know what to do when we mess up. We go to God and 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 get it straight with Him because we we trying we trying to get to the end. And and I like that. That is so good, and that brings up the you know the points again about the barriers to gratitude, as you said with Adam, right? Adam and Eve, they were stuck in the maze of more, even in God's presence, thinking that's one tree I can't touch. What if I ate of the fruit? <clears throat> what like what would happen? I want although they had everything else at their disposal, Adam just naming all the animals and that, you have everything else that you could ever want, but that one thing robbed you of what God has given you. That's really good. All right, anyone else? Yeah, I thought about too what you said about God uh is the one that causes us to triumph. And so when I looked over to, uh, I looked in second in 1 Corinthians 9 and 26, when I want to read 24, it said, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for mastery is temperate, temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it under subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. But I was I was just thinking about uh, when you said about us running in a race and how important it is for us to understand, uh, you know, we, we know why we are running. And here it's saying they're running to obtain a prize. And like Minister Wilson said, we are. We are running to get our prize at the end. But we have to keep our focus on Jesus. Because if we run it and we don't, you know, if we're not paying attention to Jesus, then we're just one beating in the air and it's all in vain. So we don't want to run this race in vain. We want to make sure we run it to obtain what God promised us in his word. 
That is so good. And listen, you can tell the difference from a team or a boxer if it's an individual sport. You can tell the difference from someone who is fighting for something. You can tell uh, the difference between a team or an individual who knows uh, that the magnitude of what is at stake. And if we as believers approached our walk with Christ as if we knew what was at stake, how different would our walk be? That an eternity is at stake. That not only my salvation, but the salvation of others may be at stake because I'm a light, right? And so if I don't shine that light with integrity, as we talked about, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, if I don't ex uh, display that uh, a court above and beyond my faith, if I don't display that moral excellence, if I don't, if I don't add all those things that we've already discussed to my walk, it could be detrimental. That if I'm not a a in a a godly example to my children, that could be a ripple effect that could not just affect me but generations, because I wasn't a good example. So therefore, you know, it affects those individuals as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah and and um, just for the record, so South Carolina women's basketball team actually did go undefeated this year. There are one of, I think, five teams in the history of the NCAA women's basketball to go undefeated 38 and 0. But I, you know, I think the point that you were making, Dallas, and the point that I take is, is that we can win, we can lose a game, but just because we lose a game does not mean that we've lost the fight. Does not mean that we've lost in the end. I think put another way is. You know, we may lose some battles, but doesn't mean we're going to lose the war. And uh, I believe Don Staley, uh, she knew that it didn't matter what their really, mm. in essence, what their record was, because when they got to that championship game, if they would have lost that game, they would have went 37 and one and fell short of that championship game. And so in the back of her mind, she was looking at that game as just another game we have to win. Forget the records, you know, for, forget what people are saying about us. We got to stay focused and we got to do what we're doing right now, what we've been doing all season. And we got to do it now. We got to work now. And I think, I don't know, for those of you who didn't get a chance to, to see kind of the interview um, or after the game last night, I think it was pretty pretty powerful. I mean, I think I'll save my comments to kind of the end on kind of what she said, but I know when I watched her reaction and response after that game, it sent chills through my body, but yeah, uh, you know, let's just keep that in mind. You know, as minister Dallas is sharing is, is that, you know, we may not win in every single thing in all ways, but we know that in Christ, we will always be triumphant. Mm, that was good. That was good. I can say, if you don't already have this, I did hear about one of the quotes after the game and it was somewhere along the lines of, you might be able to say it a little bit better, but you know, she, uh, Don Staley, which is the coach at South Carolina, you know, basketball said something along the lines of that kind of at the same podium, right. That, or in the same arena or the same kind of environment last year, they lost this year. They won. Right. And, and, and again, this is a team, this is a coach who knew what was at stake. That all this hard work that we put in all year long, it could be in vain if we lose this one game, even as an undefeated team. And so we, yeah, I mean, that's good. That's good. I have a little bit more to run through. And so I definitely want to leave some time at the end for people to leave comments. So let me uh, hop back in here real quick. All right, move here. All right. There we go. All right, here. Oh, I didn't even get through this. <laughs> this. Yeah, but 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, you know, again, was good. Here, gratitude. Um, wow, that's crazy, AJ. Okay, I'm sorry. Gratitude, again, a synonym for thankfulness. In Greek is the word, is the word, Kairis, I probably pronounced that wrong. Let me see phonetic spelling. Kairis. Yeah, that didn't really help. <laughs> but Kairis, uh, it means a gift or blessing.
inclined favorable toward leading towards shared benefit. Uh, sometimes rendered thanks, but the core idea is favor or grace, which goes back here to the initial um, definition. So this relates to, to the white paper that I referred to from uh, Berkeley as well, uh, because it states that gratitude can be simplified in two in a two-step cognitive process or the thinking uh, process that you go through. One, recognizing one has obtained a positive outcome. So in order to be grateful, you have to acknowledge that something positive happened, <laughs> right? Obviously, okay something good happens so I can be thankful, okay, for it. The second step is to recognize there is an external source for this positive outcome. In this case, in every case, uh, our positive outcome is the result of the source, which is Christ Jesus, which segues perfectly into my next point. Our gratitude or thankfulness should be directed to God. It's easy to focus gratitude on things, on people, th you know, you know, I thank my wife for just being an amazing wife, for being an amazing mother. I thank, you know, uh, you know, my mother for being a great mother, you know, and being a good example to me. I thank my pastor, right? Because he's a good example of, you know, a man of God, like, is he, but I want to focus this part of the study on directing our gratitude or thankfulness to God. This goes back to one of my initial points that this discussion that is at times had is not about science versus Christianity. That we are approaching this conversation with the perspective that God is the giver of wisdom according to James 1, 5 through 8. I'm not assuming that all scientific and um, psychological papers are sound arguments or are um, biblically sound, but that those that align, that align with with uh with uh biblical truth can be used in conjunction with the text again going back to the concept of study to show thyself approved thank you sp said this is the same word as charisma so charis is the same word as charisma excellent all right moving on here to the last piece here and the piece i want to spend a good portion of the next 10 minutes <laughs> here biblical example of gratitude woman with the alabaster box this is found in the gospel at luke in luke chapter 7 verse 36 through 50 there are also parallel parallels here as well which have uh minute differences um that we can acknowledge too if we have time but it can also be found and i want to pay a little attention to john 12 verses 2 through 8 a uh, similar story um but the gospels with a little different story or a little bit different uh, details of this is Matthew 26, 6 through 10 and Mark 14, 3 through 9. So let's go to Luke 7, verse 36 through 50. Can I have a volunteer for this? Luke 7, 36 through 50. Thank you. 36 50. Yes, on the left of the screen, I have NLT. On the right, I have KJV. Okay, I'll start on the left. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thought. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus said, then Jesus told him the story. A man loaned money to two people. 
500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debt. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sin, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown, much, she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love then jesus said to the woman your sins are forgiven the men at the table said among themselves who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins and jesus said to that woman your faith has saved you go in peace thank you and then we're going to read the next verse here john 12 2 through 8 can i get a volunteer for this scripture Okay, John 12, 2 through, two through 8, any special translation? I have the NLT on the left and the KJV on the right here. Okay, uh, 12, uh, 2 through 8. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. With him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of, of nard and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with his hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said that perfume was worth a year's wage. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but will not always have me. Amen. Wow, Judas was a thief. Mm, mm, mm. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, here, just want to highlight these points. Uh, so I found an interest. There's a couple different differences uh, between the gospels in this story. Some identify the woman as Mary, the others say a woman. And so I thought that was interesting. Also, there was a difference uh, in between uh, where the woman anointed uh, Jesus as well. In some texts, it was his feet. In one text, I believe that was Matthew, it was his head. And so I thought that was really interesting as we study the text here. But the things I want to highlight here is that in verse 47 of Luke uh, chapter 7, it, you know, Jesus talks about to whom much is forgiven, much love is shown. I found that to be, again, a reminder of kind of the... Um, the concept of thankfulness that I think about, you know, how good you've been to me. Therefore, I express gratitude to gratitude may lead to an unusual, uh, an unusual response. Sometimes uh, being sometimes when you acknowledge uh, the positive outcomes that you have been able to benefit from, it makes you do unusual things. This woman identified in John as Mary, anointed Jesus's head or feet uh, with the content of this box and anointed Jesus. This woman was known to be sinful, approaching Jesus, Jesus, some called a rabbi. So I found that to be very interesting. The unusual piece being a sinful woman who was known to have many sins to approach a rabbi, not just to approach, but even touch. <laughs> you know, because she kissed his feet, she anointed him. Last piece here, that our response to favor and grace is priceless. Thinking about how Judas, he actually put a, a monetary amount on the, uh, the box, the alabaster box, that he approximated the value of this box to be 
equal to a year's wages. Some say it was 300 denarii or, or in today's uh, time over $54,000. And so sometimes our response, that again, that goes into point two, that that's unusual. Like, why would you break this box of 54? Like this costs more than a car today. This is a nice car, right? $54,000. You, uh, you want to approach somebody, you as a sinner have no business approaching. You have you you as a sinner have no business touching a rabbi. Um, and you come before him, you do this, and as if you don't know how much this box costs, you pour it out on him. Again, an overwhelming uh feeling of gratitude that because much was forgiven, that that she could not even repay the goodness that she benefited from. But again, I understand too that this is also a bigger picture, that Jesus is, uh, that Jesus was about to be crucified, that this was prophesied. But to look at it just from this kind of perspective, who anointed Jesus in preparation of his burial? All right, that's all I have. I know we have a couple minutes here. And so I open up the call for any last comments um, in response to this, to lesson. this lesson. A minister. Oh, go ahead. Um, um, go ahead, Vanis. I was just going to say I was a little bit late getting on, on here, but I've been on my phone, okay? But uh, it, and it's really, really, really been good, okay? I have really enjoyed this. And uh, I, I was thinking back uh, to even whenever um, you guys were talking um, and I was, you know, coming in. But this uh, alabaster box, uh, uh, I, th I was thinking just now, that was her treasure. You know, that was her treasure. When you're thinking of talking about the amount that it was said that might have been in that box, you don't know how she got it. You don't know what she did to get that money. You don't know what she did to, you, at the sins it says were many, okay? But that was her treasure. And you know, whenever God has forgiven you or God has brought you from one place to another, what seems so important to begin with, you don't mind making that sacrifice and giving it to, give it to him. You know, uh, how he told, um, um, what's the name of who? You didn't even offer me water. You didn't uh, 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 do wash my feet off. And here's this woman. She's gonna sit here and take her hair and 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 wash it with her tears. You know, she was she had she was grateful. Okay, she was thankful. She gave what she, her treasure that I'm um, ain't no telling how long. She'd been carrying that box around. C.C. Wyland sang that song, The Alabaster Box. You don't know the cost of my alabaster. You don't know. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know where I come from. You don't know where I was the night he found me, that song says. You don't know. But I know all of this. So right now, this perfume, no matter how much it costs, I mean, I'm giving it. I don't mind. I, 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 I wash a seat. I wash whatever he needs need washing, you know, because I am so grateful. And that's the way I feel like uh, we ought to be. Because no, nobody does, nobody don't know where you came from. I might look at you giving and say, um, you know, it don't take all that or uh, what he giving that for. But I don't know where God delivered you from. I don't know where he reached way down and pulled you up out of, you know. I can just know, I just heard what it said, her sins were many, you know, and to be delivered from that bondage. No treasure that I hold or that I've held is more important. I give it with an open heart, a whole heart, with gratitude, Dallas, with gratitude, gratefulness, gratefulness. I'm done. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That was good. And, you know, as we were talking, I just thought that whatever um, whatever God tells us to submit is always worth it. 
that, you know, they talk about how much the box costs and who the woman were, you know, when we acknowledge, because it's not necessarily that God hasn't forgiven us, it's not necessarily that God, that we haven't benefited from God's grace, it's more so if we acknowledge it. Do we as believers acknowledge the magnitude of the sacrifice of Jesus? You know, do we, un, like, can we realize that? And I think that's when we start uh, our journey, right, of gratitude that, wow, I probably can never really conceptualize, like, what it looked like. They say that the Passion of the Christ, you know, the movie can't even uh, do what really happened any justice. And I'm sure there was many people saved, you know, from the movie and everything, even how gruesome it was, it still didn't visualize accurately what happened to Jesus. And so, you know, whatever God tells us to give up or to submit to him is always worth it. All right, I'll open up the call again. All right. There's no more comments. Just want to say thanks for your participation, your engagement, and just for being here tonight. Uh, I thank God for the word that he shared and thank God for Pastor Stephen as well for the opportunity to share what God has put on my heart. So this time I'll pass it back over to Pastor Stephen. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Minister uh, Dallas, for this teaching and study on gratitude and the importance of us not only showing and demonstrating gratitude, but always remembering um, where our gratefulness, us being grateful, who is the one, the rewarder of that gratefulness and where that comes from. And is of course, Jesus Christ um, for all that he has done. And we, you know, one of the things takeaways for me is, is we, we got to have the right perspective. Uh, you talked about in order to be grateful, you have to see the positive in things. And the only way we can see the positive in this life, because this life is full of a lot of negative, the only way we can see the positive in this life, we have to have the lens of Christ. We cannot have the lens of this world because the lens of this world is foggy, it's dim, it's kind of like the word of God talked about. The Old Testament was uh, was was a dim picture. You could not really see clearly see all that Christ, that God had in store through his son, Jesus Christ. Christ came to, to make that picture clearer, a whole lot clearer, so we can definitively see and better understand uh, the path and the way that Jesus Christ laid out, um, that God laid out for us to get back to him, which was through his son, Jesus Christ. And uh, just, you know, the comment I was going to make about Don Staley, because um, it, it kind of triggered me as you were talking about gratefulness, and you mentioned uh one the definition that you had was gratefulness. Uh, let me see if I have it here. Uh, okay, gratitude. You you define gratitude as extending favor towards or giving grace and kindness as a response. And so after the the South Carolina women's basketball team won the national championship last night. And the, the, the commentator, the announcer, the interviewer went up to Don Staley to interview her. You know, she, she couldn't even hardly stand up. I mean, her, she was trying to ask her, how do you feel? What's going through your mind? And her players, you know, I knew she, I, she would lay prostrate if her players hadn't held her up, but she said these two words. She said that the most she can get out of her mouth as she was standing there crying, looking in the camera, is she said, uncommon favor. She said, uncommon favor. And she gave God all the glory. That's the first thing. She said, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I give him all the glory. It's uncommon favor. Some people might have looked at the Iowa team, those girls who made it to the championship last year, made it back this year. You know, they had, they had the best player, Caitlin, uh, in the country women's play in the country on their team she broke like four or five ncaa records both in males and females basketball and i know some people probably looked at that team and said oh they deserve the win i would have never won a championship national championship south carolina has three they deserve the win and and i think when don said he thought about that she thought about you know what it does not matter people's opinions and what they think folks deserve but it only matters what God says you and I deserve 
his opinion, which is really not opinion, his, his, what he says is fact, his word, you could take that to the bank. And so when she said uncommon favor, it was just like she was saying, you know what? Regardless of what people think, who deserved it? <laughs> My God had the final say in this thing. And I pray that that we we have that mind and that mentality that we don't give up. Some of you posted in chat, hey, regardless of what happened last year and regardless of what you've gone through uh, recently, don't live your life today and your expectation for the future based off what has happened in the past. But let's live life believing God, standing on his word, knowing that God is not man. He should lie, neither the son of man. He shall repent. If he said it, he surely will bring it to pass. All right, Minister Dallas, I'll turn it back over to your hands, man, if you want to dismiss us. All right, we can do that. Lord God, we thank you, God, just for your presence on tonight. Thank you, God, for your word. God, thank you for just reminding us to be grateful in the reasons and the many, many reasons uh, why we can be grateful, God. We thank you uh, for helping us and just continually um, reminding us of your goodness, God, as, you know, as different things that um, we've seen also say, um, do in remembrance of me, God, as we uh, had communion, um, you know, more recently, God, help us to live our lives in remembrance of you. Help us to respond to people um, in remembrance of you and being uh, mindful of the grace and the favor you have extended unto us, God. We thank you, God, for continuously um, reminding us that we race not against each other, uh, but we race, God, not as one that beats the air, as Paul says, but we are looking to obtain a prize. We thank you for helping us to realize what's at stake, God, and that we can lead every day with the mindset of gratitude, with the mood, with the emotion um, of gratitude, but knowing also being joint heirs with you, Jesus, that uh, we have a trait also of gratitude, that it, it's embedded on the inside of us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to fix our eyes on you, the author and the finisher of our faith as we encounter every day, that every day will not be perfect, that every day we might not uh, live a life of being undefeated. There may be some games that we lose, but yes. God, help us to focus on you. Help us, God, to acknowledge you in all of our ways so that you can continue to direct our paths as long as we walk on the path that you have ordered, uh, everything will be okay. That yes, we sir. will continue to receive your favor and your grace. As it says in Psalms, goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. And for that alone, I'm grateful. Thank you, God, for this week. We pray that you cover us and keep us as we embark on a brand new week, God. Uh, we pray that you encamp your angels around us, God. We pray uh, that you continue to cover us, and we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen.